So it's pretty well known that the uh, early Christians generally showed a lot of uh, open and uh, visible contempt for pagan shrines and uh, statues as they passed by them on the street. But how did they show this contempt? Well, in this video, I'll discuss some rather interesting uh, descriptions left by the uh, Emperor Julian in a, a letter to a pagan priest regarding the uh, or his visit to some uh, pagan temples which were still standing in his time, and his uh, description of the kind of ritual show of distaste that uh, uh, Christians made as they passed these places. It's a fascinating glimpse into the last few decades of pagan worship as it was being banned throughout the empire in the 4th century, and the way the Christians were uh, behaving towards their uh, pagan fellow Romans now they had the, uh, the power and control of the state. A quick introduction on Julian himself. Uh, Julian, or uh, Julian the Apostate, as he was uh, later called, happened to be uh, the last pagan to rule the empire. He was only on the throne for two short years, being made uh, emperor at the age of 30 in the year 361 AD. And he died before his time in, a, in an ill-fated uh, expedition against the Persians. But in those two years, he made his mark on history, being a, a throwback to uh, previous philosopher emperors like uh, Marcus Aurelius, for example in an empire that was uh, fast approaching its twilight period. Julian had been brought up as a Christian, but uh, preferred the pagan Hellenism and uh, philosophy of the Greeks, and uh, rejected Christianity by the age of 20. He kept his pagan sympathies and uh, feelings secret, though, and uh, this was to prevent getting estranged from the, the rest of the imperial family, which was now entirely Christian and uh, increasingly intolerant of pagan values. Certainly coming out as a pagan would have you know, ended any chance of him being raised to the purple, so uh, he did play his cards right. He did, however, openly come out as a pagan when he became emperor and uh, when it was safe to do so. Julian was brought up in fast-changing times. The Roman Empire was declining and uh, heading into its last century of existence. Christianity now had the upper hand and uh, Constantine and his successors had uh, begun promoting Christianity and uh, destroying the pagan legacy and uh, culture of the empire, with uh, various temples already being uh, destroyed by the authorities or uh, Christian mobs, and uh, their statues and uh, valuables plundered for use in uh, new churches which were uh, sprouting up everywhere. In short, it was rapidly becoming difficult to be a pagan or, or worship as one, as uh, legislation began to be uh, introduced to uh, curtail pagan practices. And so naturally, it was a time of considerable discord and uh, antagonism between the, uh, the pagans and the now much more confident and uh, aggressive Christians who'd, uh, who now had the upper hand. Julian would try and turn the clock back, uh, believing the empire could be revived if it uh, returned to its classical Greco-Roman foundations and uh, values and traditions rather than adopting the uh, pseudo-Jewish values of uh, Christianity. And so he spent his time trying to revive paganism. And I'll go into the measures he took during his time in uh, future videos. So let's discuss the letter that he wrote to uh, a certain priest. This letter relates some uh, anecdotes from the year 354 AD. In other words, eight or nine years earlier, before Julian had become emperor. And at that time, the emperor was Constantius II. And uh, Constantius had summoned Julian to make him Caesar and uh, governor of Gaul. So uh, Julian, who was in Asia Minor at that time, had to uh, arrange to travel to the imperial court at Milan. His journey would take him through a town called Alexandria Troas on the, uh, the west coast of Asia Minor and uh, not far from the eastern Roman capital, Constantinople. On his trip, he would pass New Ilios, the, uh, the town that had sprung up on the uh, site of ancient Troy. And I guess this must have been an exciting time for him, visiting the, uh, the scene of Homer's Iliad. The letter, some uh, scholars suspect, may have been to the high priest Theodorus, although uh, there's not much evidence to back this up. By the way, in the letter and, uh, and in his other works, Julian usually refers to Christians as Galileans. He also refers to them as uh, deprived or uh, as atheists sometimes. Julian is talking of a chap called Pegasius who'd uh, managed to become a Christian bishop, but who still seemed to have a secret pagan allegiance of uh, some sort or another. Quote, he was wise enough to revere and honour the gods, unquote, Julian would write of Pegasius. And this may or may not have meant he was really a pagan or uh, perhaps uh, just a recent convert. I ought to detest him above all other depraved persons, Julian continued, describing how he had hatred towards all Christians, but even more so against the, uh, uh, the bishops and uh, the other 
Christian leaders. Julian narrates Pagasius giving him a tour of the uh, the temples of the city. And uh, Julian at this time, it has to be remembered, was a secret pagan as well. And uh, again, he says Pagasius might have been a pagan, although pretending to be a Christian. Quote, he was not lacking in uh, right sentiments towards the gods, he explains. Julian then mentions being shown the statues of Hector and Achilles in the town, both set up against each other. And this must have been a marvellous sight, both uh, heroes of Homer's tales. Now, this is where it really gets interesting. Julian is quite surprised that the uh, the temple is being looked after so well, considering the uh, demolition and uh, plundering of so many temples in the uh, the empire at that time. Quote, now I found the altars were still alight. I might almost say still blazing and that the uh, statue of Hector had been anointed till it shone. So I looked at Pegasius and said, uh, what does this mean? Do the people of Ilios offer sacrifices? And this was to test him cautiously to find out his own views. So this continuation of the the sacrifices to these uh, great heroes obviously surprised Julian, otherwise he wouldn't have uh, posed the question. The very fact that he had to ask Pegasius if sacrifices were still continuing indicates the uh, draconian effect that the uh, the clampdown on uh, pagan worship by the Christian authorities was having around uh, 40 years after Constantine's conversion. Anyway, the letter states that uh, Pegasius takes Julian with much eagerness to the shrine of Athena in the town. And this was also still intact, with the uh, statue still not wrecked. Again, this must have surprised Julian. However, it's uh, noticeable that Julian mentions no worshippers or uh, throngs of devotees visiting the place. And uh, therefore, the impression one gets is that these temples, uh, though intact and functioning, were uh, just not being visited by the masses anymore. But here's the important part. Julian describes the kind of ritual contempt and uh, theatrics, the... uh, Christians tended to show when passing pagan shrines or or seeing pagan idols, but which uh, Pegasius noticeably didn't display. Quote, nor did he behave at all as those uh, impious men, meaning Christians, do usually. I mean, when they make the sign on their uh, impious foreheads, nor did he hiss to himself as they do. For these two things are the quintessence of their uh, theology, to hiss at demons and uh, make the sign of the cross on their foreheads. So Julian refers to them making the sign of the cross on their foreheads um, as though they were seeing some evil in front of them. But the more unfriendly reaction was for Christians to hiss at the shrines or idols as if one would at demons. And of course, this was the the early Christian view anyway, that the old Greek gods were actually demons in disguise, fooling people for many centuries into following them. Pegasius seems to understand the reverence the pagans give to Achilles. Quote, is it not natural that they should worship a brave man who was their own citizen, just as we worship the martyrs? Now, the analogy was far from sound, but his point of view and uh, intentions were those of a man of culture, if you consider the times in which we then lived. So Julian here takes a swipe at the more uh, rougher, uncultured times of the 4th century uh, compared to the more tolerant pagan centuries of the past. Julian then goes on to explain uh, that the Temple of Achilles, which... uh, had, as far as he knew, been uh, pulled down by the Christian authorities or the local Christians, was was actually still intact. Pegasus, he says, quote, approached it with great reverence. I saw this with my own eyes, and I have heard from those who are now his enemies that he also used to offer prayers to Helios and uh, worship him in secret. So here we have a man who seems to have uh, converted to Christianity under the uh, duress imposed during those days by the uh, by the Christian authorities or uh, social pressure, and uh, had become a bishop no less, but uh, nevertheless still seemed to be a a secret pagan. And because of his pagan sympathies, the man had obviously made enemies, essentially the Christians of that time, who uh, saw that he had reverted to paganism. But Julian was prepared to accept him as a a like-minded person, as he writes. Julian also finishes his description of his uh, visit with some wise words. He says that these people who uh, may have converted under duress or uh, the pressures of the time must be accepted back into the pagan fold with no suspicions being cast on them. Quote, if you care at all for my wishes, you will honour him not only but any others who are uh, converted in order that they may more readily heed me when I summon them to good works and those others may have less cause to uh, rejoice. 
But if we drive away those who have uh, come to us of their own free will, no one will be ready to heed when we summon. So in other words, he's probably talking about the general masses who had uh, convert, converted nominally due to uh, pressure from the authorities and the, uh, the Christians, but might be ready to come back into the pagan fold if they were accepted with open arms rather than suspicion. So it's a fairly short but very interesting letter, and uh, I include the full text in the description below. It's a good indicator of the, uh, you know, the fearful and uh, uncertain atmosphere prevailing at that time when uh, pagan temples were being pulled down by the locals and uh, Christian authorities, and uh, even someone in the imperial family was uh, unsure which shrines were still up and uh, which weren't. It's also a good indicator of the the ritual abuse that the uh, the pagan shrines and statues of the gods and uh, heroes of the ancient world were being given by the local Christians. The obligatory hissing and uh, making of the signs of the cross as they uh, passed by the temples must have been a, an uncomfortable sight to watch for the pagans of the time. Today you can visit the ruins of uh, Troas, of course, and then uh, make your way further up the coast to the ruins of Troy essentially walking in the footsteps of uh, the Emperor Julian. But it's anybody's guess what happened to these uh, marvellous statues of uh, Hector and Achilles and the, uh, the goddess Athena. Anyway, that's it for now. Hope you liked the video. And uh, if you do, do consider giving it a like and uh, subscribing to the channel.